Good afternoon, Pastor. Hey, John. Welcome, everybody, to Unfiltered, a random moment with Pastor David. And today, Pastor, I'd like to ask a question. In Ephesians chapter 4, uh, Paul instructs the church of Ephesus to walk worthy, uh, uh, walk worthy of the calling in which they've been called. As Christians, we use that term, walking worthy, walking with the Lord, that uh, identifies how we live our life for Christ. Recently, I had a conversation with somebody and they mentioned to me that they're Christians, but they also uh, drink alcohol, even to the point where it has caused some drunkenness. Mm -hmm. Can Christianity and alcohol be considered a walk that is walking worthy before the Lord? <laughs> the uh, Supreme Saint, right? The old <laughs> question, you know, how much is how much is too much? And how far can I go? Usually questions like that are, are like that. There's a line drawn, we'll say. And um, the question very often, John, is uh, how close to that mm. line can I get? And anybody who is wanting to find that line so they can they can do something, you know, that they feel is within the bound, boundaries of grace is telling me they're carnal. I mean, just from the beginning. Instead of saying, God, save me from this wicked life and God, help me to live a life that pleases you and say, God, help me to enjoy life and do the things I want and still get to heaven and all of that. So, bro, I, you know, the, the, the argument today is, a, is an argument that I guess the church is, has had for many years. But I, um, I immediately re respond to such a question by saying, why, <laughs> why? Give me some benefits from drinking. Yeah. Give me some benefits. Oh, well, wait a minute, Jesus made wine. Uh, oh, gee, I never have heard that one. And, uh, you know, but it says, be ye not drunk with wine, you know. And uh, so there's no prohibition. And even the deacons were to not be given to much wine, right? And so we get into a big, big discussion about um, what what wine is, what is the composition of wine, what kind of wine did they drink during the time of Christ? Um, did Jesus get drunk? Did G Jesus drink? Did Jesus drink wine when he had Passover? You know, did he have unfermented wine, or did he? You know, things like that. You know, and so here's the thing, John. Anytime somebody begins to want to know how far they can go and still be saved is a danger mm -hmm. anytime and i have done i've done this kind of conversation before where i've spent several minutes developing um why drinking is not a good thing drinking to excesses obviously and any christian who claims that oh i have freedom in christ to be drunk is disobeying scripture it isn't wise for a man to to, to drink wine. It's not fit for kings, O Lemuel, you know, the writer of Proverbs says, you know. It isn't fit for kings. And if we truly are um, kings kings and priests, if we truly are members of the kingdom of God and, and, and spiritual royalty, which we, we are in Christ, uh, it isn't fit for a king to drink wine. It's certainly not fit for a, a man of God or a woman of God to... Uh, to push the boundaries and see how far they can go without getting too drunk or drunk at all. Be not drunk with wine. So if you've got a Christian who is drinking to the point of inebriation, he violated scripture. So can you be a good witness for the love and grace of God, the power of the Holy Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit? Can you, while you're drinking your wine, talking to your friends? Can you really? And if you think you can, you've deceived yourself because you can't. You cannot, at least here in the United States, and please don't start arguing with me about Italy or England and how, you know, or, or in Germany where Luther would over a good pint of ale, you know, think of deep things. And what else did he think of? We don't know. So I, I, I just, I think those are, um, those are arguments that are intended not to make a point but to give oneself permission to do what they just flat out want to do. And so, are you a good witness when you drink? Are you thinking of the things of the Lord when you have your beer? Are you really? 
because what that really reveals to me is you've got other things on your mind and other desires and you're basically placating the desires of the flesh. One of the things we were sharing just recently about John the Baptist is he would not drink strong drink. He was somebody who was filled with the spirit from his mother's womb and, and he did not drink. And that was a demonstration of his um, separation that he was set apart for the work of God. And uh, I think that he's a good example of somebody who truly had a righteousness within him. And so when somebody is saying, Pastor, can I drink? I'm not a legalist. And, and immediately people, oh, you're a legalist. No, what I am is a person who wants people saved. And anybody who wants to argue with me how you can still be a great Christian and a drinker probably hasn't, hasn't too much experience with those whose lives were ruined by alcohol. You know, somebody was saying to me one time that they were concerned about... Uh, drinking and um they were saying that um it's not so much that you're drinking it's that the person that's watching you is being affected and i heard the story of a pastor whose father was um he was a good family man he loved his kids he went to church he was at a party, and while at the party, somebody invited him to have a drink. The man had never had a drink in his life. He said, I watched my father, a man who was really just always a, a good man there for the family. I watched him as he slowly but surely began to get addicted to alcohol to the point where my father eventually divorced my mother, left the family, and died an alcoholic. He said, okay, you want to argue about drinking wine and you have freedom to do it, but have you thought about the ones you influence with your freedoms? You may not become an alcoholic, but have you ever asked yourself whether you've influenced somebody to become one? Mm -hmm. Listen, if you really love people, and I think we do, it, it, that's a mark of a Christian, then you're not going to want to do something to stumble a brother. And Jesus said that uh, a person who offends It'd be better for him, this little one who believes in me, for him to have a millstone tied around his neck and dropped into the deepest part of the sea. So, John, I just really have, I, I really have an opposition to sipping saints because in the end, and I probably lost so many right now, you're not going to hear this conclusion, but in the end, it's because I want people saved. I want people saved. I, I want them saved out of out of the money they spend on wine that could have been spent on their family or even given to the Lord. The money that they spend on their alcohol that is being misplaced and sometimes it could have been used for so many other things. The, the illnesses that they can get it when they drink and get the cirrhosis of the liver. I, I have ministered to people who have died of cirrhosis of the liver. I have done that. I had a, I had a cousin who died of cirrhosis and it's not, an, it's not a pretty way to die. You know, people who have, who have lost everything, lost families, lost jobs, lost reputation, lost so many things. So I'm not the, the right pastor to argue with about those things. You know, I'm, 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 not, I'm not a um, ivory tower person oh you know in love and grace no I'm a practical mm -hmm. person and uh, just isn't wise to linger at the cup mm -hmm. to look at the wine when it's red because who has woe who has bruises who has wounds with no reason the one who lingers at the cup mm -hmm. and so instead of going out and spending money on something that kills you you could put that money into something that builds you up. You could put that money into something that builds your family up. So, do Christians drink? Are they unsaved because they had a beer? That, that's not what I'm saying. Anybody who thinks that's what I'm saying isn't listening because you're you're probably, those who are offended, you're, you're, you're probably what I like to call a um, alcohol evangelist. 
you're more concerned with your freedoms and getting people to agree with you than you are with bringing people to saving faith in Jesus Christ. Your freedoms mean more than their freedom. Keep that in mind. And so, hate me if you want. I don't know. I don't know you. But if you're struggling with alcohol, Jesus can set you free. I was a drunk. I was a drunk. I know what that life is. I was arrested three different times for alcohol-related offenses. It's not like I've never tarried at the cop. It's not like I've never broken people's hearts by things I was doing when I was drunk. And if you're still drinking, you need to be filled with the Spirit. Be not drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. Why, why don't be drunk with wine? Because he says, in it is dissipation. The word dissipation, lack of control. A lack of self-control. Don't tell me you've ever seen a drunk who's in total control. They don't, they don't uh, cite people or arrest people for driving under total control. They drive them. They, they cite them or jail them for driving under the influence. And that's why instead of being under the influence of, of the alcohol, we're to be under the influence of the Spirit. So there's your answer. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor. Thank you so much for your time uh, with Random Moments with Pastor David. And I want to join you guys, have you join us on Wednesday evening, uh, tomorrow, 7 p.m. Yep. And we're going through the book of Job. And then on Sunday, we have 8.30 and 10.45 yep. uh, through the book of Mark. So Come and have a drink with us. <laughs> <laughs> Go with Thank us to Israel. You. Thank you, Pastor David. Uh, God bless you. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank Go you, ahead, Pastor. Bro.